As you may know, we're living in the year 2020. In a few days, it will be 2021. Back a couple of hundred years ago, your great, great, great grandpa and grammy would have often used the words, in the year of our Lord, when talking about what year it is, especially when putting it in writing. Why did they use those words? Because Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was born into the world, and people many years ago wanted to mark his birth so special that they made it year zero. And so every year after that was the year of our Lord, the year of our Lord one, the year of our Lord two, the year of our Lord three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, all the way up to the year of our Lord two thousand and twenty so far. When people refer to the year as being 2020 AD, that is short for an old language that means the year of the Lord. The years before Jesus was born are referred to as BC, which stands for before Christ. BC goes backwards, so 2020 BC would be followed by 2019 instead of 20. 21, so it would be 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. <laughs> of course, they didn't know exactly when Jesus would be born, so this whole system with of dates was set up many years afterwards, and they didn't necessarily get it exactly right, so 0 might not be exactly the year he was born, but it's close. It's close enough. Well, I'm going to tell you about what happened back around the year of our Lord Zero. Here goes. There was a young woman, about 14 years old, so she was practically a kid. Her name was Mary. Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. Well, they weren't married yet, so they hadn't done anything with each other that would have caused Mary to be pregnant and have a baby, but something very unexpected happened. God. Gabriel, I want you to go to the city of Nazareth, to the home of the young woman named Mary, and speak to her thus. Gabriel, therefore, went as requested and appeared to Mary. Angel Gabriel. Be happy, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. You are blessed among all women. Mary's thinking, yikes, I'm not sure I get it. Who is this dude? Why is he my room and what makes him think I'm special? Angel Gabriel, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. In fact, you're going to have a baby boy and we'll call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be given a kingship that will never, ever end. Mary. How is that going to happen? I haven't done anything with a man to get pregnant. Angel Gabriel. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of God will overshadow you. God will put his seed in you, and so that the Holy One who is born will be the Son of God. By the way, your cousin Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she's old enough to be your Grammy. You see, with God, nothing will be impossible. Mary, I'm in the service of the Lord, so bring it on. Gabriel left. Mary thinks to herself, now what? What are people going to think? Here I will obviously have a baby in my belly and I'm not married yet. I know. I'll go to my cousin Elizabeth. Maybe she can help me sort this out. So Mary left and went to her cousin's house. Now the special baby her cousin was having 
was going to grow up to be John the Baptist. His purpose was to prepare and point others to Jesus. Elizabeth loved God, and God blessed her with his very special baby. So, when Mary greeted Elizabeth, the baby leaped in her belly, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit and said, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the one coming from your belly. Why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord should come to me? You see, she recognized that the baby in Mary was her Lord. Mary, too, was filled with the Spirit and had much joy and spoke of what the Lord had done for her. She stayed with Elizabeth about three months after that. For background, Israel, along with much of what was now called Europe and the Middle East, was taken over by the Roman Empire centered in Rome, Italy. So in what seemed like really bad timing, when Mary was due to have her baby, Caesar, Augustus, the current ruler, decided that he needed more money and control over the people, as rulers often do. And so he demanded that everyone be registered back in their hometown so they can be taxed. So Joseph and Mary went to their hometown, known as the city of David, called Bethlehem. When they got there, they tried to find a place to stay for a few nights, but the city was overcrowded and there was no room for them in the inn. It's a place like a motel. Joseph to the innkeeper. Please, kind sir, as you can see, Mary here is about to give birth. Have you no place for us? Innkeeper. Well, okay. I guess I can let you stay in the stable where the animals are kept. You may have a clean you may have to clean it up a bit, but there's plenty of hay. That night, Mary started to experience the pains of childbirth. Mary. Joseph, I'm about to have a baby. Where can we put him where he's safe and comfortable? Joseph. How about we take the, this feeding trough, line it with hay, and get the cloths we brought with us to wrap the baby in? Mary thought that was a great idea, and so Joseph prepared the place, and after the baby was born, Mary wrapped the baby tightly in cloths and laid him in the manger. The wrapping of a baby is called swaddling in the Bible, a word we usually don't use today. A newborn baby is comforted when wrapped warmly, reminding him of the warmth of his mommy's tummy. Meanwhile, outside the city, there were some shepherds watching over their sheep when an angel appeared to them. Shepherd one. Yikes! Who? What? Where? Why? Shepherd two. <laughs> Shepherd three. Falls on his face and mutters inarticulate sounds. <laughs> angel. Don't be afraid. I've come with some great news that's good news for everyone. This night in the city of David, the Savior is born, which is Christ the Lord. And this is how you'll know that what I'm telling you is true. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, appeared thousands of angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, goodwill toward men. Silence. Shepherds look at each other. Shepherd three. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go see this thing the Lord has shown us. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down, and glory showed up. Seize their troubled mind. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is 
born of David's line. The Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed. All meanly wrapped in swaddling bands and in a manger laid. And in a manger laid. All glory be to God on high and to the earth be peace. Good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease. Begin and never cease. And so the shepherds went as fast as they could into Bethlehem and found the baby just as the angel told them. They were so excited that they went around the whole town telling everyone about the baby and the angels. This was very special to Mary, which is, she pondered for many years to come. I believe that's why she was able to tell Luke about, about it, and he wrote it in the book of Luke, which is in our Bibles. So that's the Christmas story. You may be wondering, uh, where are those wise guys who are supposed to be showing up with gifts? Well, the truth of the matter is, they were a very long way away, and they didn't show up on the scene for a couple of years. So that's another story to be told. <laughs>